okay so good afternoon so i hope you have joined this course for some fun right so uh, this uh, i mean i think you are lucky that you are going to have this course because i think uh, this is the first course right on this topic since we are working on this since last couple of years especially from 2012 i still remember october or november something like that when we started working on it and uh, in on this topic and then 2013 we published our first paper and released that software and after that uh, a lot of work has been done now as you know uh, this technology is coming up uh, in a very big way and uh, uh, international consortium has been formed especially uh, the leaders are microsoft western digital illumina and twist biosciences so you know so i think uh, so obviously there are certain challenges also when you first time teach a course there is no book right no material only couple of research papers will be there so why i offer this course because you know when i realize that now there is a lot of literature every time if i try to read something else happening here and there so it's better to organize everything at at one place right so i think apart from uh, learning uh, by you it is good for me also that i will be able to organize the entire stuff in a nice way and also i am releasing on youtube so i think uh, people will be able to watch it anyway so uh, that is a thing uh, as you know that we have also done the experiment so we are very much interested in doing everything here theory software as well as the experimental stuff you know so we have already this was the demonstration we have given to the prime minister of india in israel in 2018 you know on this uh, small paper uh, in a white pot there was a dna and where we have stored we have written something also in the petri dish you know so we have stored data on the bacteria and retrieved it successfully okay so this is something uh, very interesting uh, why we should store on bacteria because you, you can get unlimited copies bacteria will grow you store data on one bacteria it will take it will you know you after some time you have more bacteria next generation next generation and you pick up any any bacteria from that generation and you retrieve the data so this is possible right so it's robustness in the system right you can store uh, that kind of stuff so anyway uh, so let me start this course dna storage and security uh normally uh, i would have given a course on dna storage only but security is very very important and you will see why uh you know not many people have looked at from security point of view so i have couple of ideas which we will explore in the course uh and you will see that how things gel really well you know so from the cryptographic perspective uh, you know you see for example even you can use blockchain you know so i think some of you might be familiar with or you might have done blockchain i think you are doing a blockchain course right so so variety of things are possible here you know unlimited possibilities are there you know so you you know any idea that you have come across uh, in uh, computer science you know you will see that uh, that is because ultimately it's a storage and it's to, this is the ultimate storage machine so if you have ultimate storage machine you can actually uh, do variety of things with it okay so security is also very important aspect by the way uh, i have been offering a course uh, earlier on natural computing all the videos are available on youtube if you want to see of course that is also a very unique course uh, so there you want to do computation with nature you know so natural objects like dna protein bacteria whatever to solve some math problems or something like that this is a first program written by bacteria hello world you know uh, that is back in uh, i guess uh, 2003 or 4 something around the, yeah 2004 yeah uh, by the student of boston caltech mit princeton university of texas this was all done by undergraduate students just like you you know sitting in the room so they have programmed the bacteria write hello world you know so this is something uh, you know it's very interesting uh, people have developed another technology known as bacterial uh, photograph or bacterial uh, camera you know so those kind of things have been done a lot of things are happening here and there obviously it's a emerging technology so this course especially 
Uh, so obviously you can read some more material about this. There is a new book release, Handbook of Unconventional Computing, Handbook of Natural Computing, and Computing in the Living Cells. So basically, uh, natural computing builds a bridge between computer science and natural sciences. You know, so all these life sciences and other things, you know, natural sciences in general, and uh, you know, computer science. So they are very closely related. So obviously, so if you want to know more about that course, uh, you can look at the YouTube lectures. I think some of you know already about this. So first, this is something important. So. So there is only one exam as you can see and depending upon Shraddha, right, we may, we may move, I mean we can have 20 percent here and 30 percent here, right. So if you really, because obviously when you write uh, scribes, those will be the first of its kind, right, you will be writing something and uh, gathering information uh, on any piece of topic, you know, there are plenty of topics I will show you, what are the possibilities, you know, okay. So, Projects are fifty percent, obviously. So the important component, and I think uh, the best learning comes when you do project, right? Otherwise, it's just exam. So what kind of opportunities are available for you? Theoretical, as I mentioned, you can design new algorithms and so on. If if you have band of designing algorithms, that is possible. Okay. Other thing is software development. So you know that we already have this software DNA cloud. Uh, we want to extend it. Anyway, in fact, we were talking to Microsoft about it. Uh, so, you want to have just like that, you know, you want to use uh, Office, right? Microsoft Office or something like that. You want a standalone software for doing all this DNA storage business, you know. So, I think if there are a couple of teams which can make, we can make and a team can contribute in different ways, so we can have a very good software, okay? So, people are going to use it. People know about it anyway, but people are going to use uh, quite often. We know how to develop it further. And the experimental part, if you are really very much interested, or if you can make, suppose you want to do some cryptographic experiments. So, store DNA storage with cryptography kind of thing, dealing with bacteria or anything. So, we have now collaboration uh, at uh, Purdue University. We have one collaboration at, uh, you know, uh, Fraunhofer Institute in uh, Germany, where we can do the experiments. Of course, we have done some experiment in National Center for Biological Sciences, TIFR Bangalore in India, okay. So, but we have uh, many more uh, collaborations abroad where you can do the experiment. So, I think, uh, you know, previously uh, in many of these elective courses, students have done some great work and they have published also, you know. In, so, in this project itself, uh, you know, even if it is a software, suppose uh, a component of software you developed, you know, that can also be published as a software paper, you know, if you want. So, that is also an output, right. Or, uh, you know, if you are developing some new algorithms, that can be because there is a lot of low hanging. Definitely, do a lot of things here. You know, see that uh, not many people know about the technology, right? They they don't know since we are working since last couple of years, so we know in and out about it what is happening there. As you know, I am also part of the DNA storage storage standard in standards committee. You know, so we know what is happening. So I think there is plenty of opportunities for you to learn and uh, you know about this new technology okay so now i think i will start so how to store elephants this is a popular talk normally i give so what do you mean by elephant elephants you can store on gut bacteria this is a possibility i mean the, i mean i am talking about in the real elephants as well because you know you can take the genome of the real elephant and maybe you can store on uh, some other genome right so that is a possibility uh, but we can use it as a metaphor also so elephants, uh, what do you mean by elephants anyway? So this quotation I really love and I think uh, uh, you should also explore this quite a lot that uh, biology and computer science, life and computation are related and I am confident at their interface great discoveries await those who seek them, okay. So this is something uh, very, very uh, uh, important quotation. So whatever is happening in computer science is already there in life means biology right so some people will say that i have not done a course on biology do you have that kind of questions right and normally in india they say that either you choose biology or choose 
math right math you will choose you go for j e coaching prepare for btech and then done right but actually unfortunately still we are not able to change that mindset i always encourage you that each of you should do a course on biology because this century is only for biology and you will see wonders what are possible in biology you know if you want someone with four eyes you can actually program the dna and you can have four eyes right or if you want someone intelligent baby so you can increase the iq you know by programming all these wonderful things are possible right when you mix computer science with biology so biology you must read now how to read where to read there is lot of information on internet but normally i suggest even you can do this course and i would suggest that you might be having some your young people in your family right somebody is studying in class 9 10 11 12 12 just ask them to take this course by eric lander from mit uh, secrets of life it's a very beautiful course around 18 19 year uh, 19 hours course you know secrets of life by eric lander e r i c eric lander lander was a mathematician and because of him you know the whole uh, things have changed in biology you know so i think if you do that course you will love biology and then you will see that how computer science and biology are same thing in fact i say that computer science is subset of biology whatever concept whatever operating system you are going to learn it's already there in biology right so when you look at it so you might be knowing that you use facebook right so facebook is a uh, kind of social platform but these bacteria also have their own facebook okay they communicate with each other you know so bacterial facebook so you might have never thought how they interact what kind of uh, things they do and they take collective decisions also you know based on those things so a lot of inter interesting things happening right uh, at this intersection so that's why i say that uh, in you know you should be a good computer science person because jobs are there right and biology if you mix biology with computer science and obviously strong mathematical foundation you can do wonders you know you could be tech leaders you know and if you don't believe me you can look at any your technical heroes like steve jobs you can uh, see his statement about biology that the next uh, this century is only for biology okay and then or whatever you know so you look at any any person or elon musk if you know right so all these people are now saying that biology is very very important because the kind of things that are possible uh, you have never uh, you know thought earlier those kind of things so it's very very important so we need to look at this intersection so when you look at this intersection initially uh, area has emerged which is known as biomolecular computing and there are mainly we can divide into five branches rna computing dna computing bacterial computing peptide computing membrane computing peptide means protein you know so membrane computing and peptide computing are mainly theoretical so people who are more interested in compiler construction and you know purely theoretical say you know, formal languages and those kind of things those people find it interesting so they do a lot of work in peptide computing and membrane computing it's all theoretical uh, now uh, you know that when you do a lot of theory people don't know how to generate money out of it right or how to sell it basically that is very very important if you are doing some theory you should know how to sell it then you can make money otherwise there is a problem whereas these three areas rna computing by the way you should know that uh, just uh, recently uh, world has celebrated rna day rna is a wonder wonderful beautiful molecule you know uh, and then dna computing and bacterial computing these are more application people have done experiments here you know so rna why rna is important that people said that life is started uh, from rna and dna is used as a storage medium by the nature so nature itself is using dna for a storing all the information who you are agar tumhare kaan thode se tede hai it is recorded in dna right agar aankhe thodi brown hai it is recorded in dna right all these things are there in if you look at the genome and you know you can understand those things uh, you know uh, see that a uh, lot of things are possible i think uh, i should mention that many people have started great companies when they mix computer science and biology for example shaadi se pehle kya milate hain janam patri right in india janam patri 
Now there is uh, another company uh, so where you can match genomes, genome patri. Okay, so that is there. I am not designing my term. It's already there. So before marriage, you can check the genome of the uh, two people, and so that you can know whether you should marry or not, because the possible generation will have diseases or not. You know, you can minimize the diseases. This is a possibility. This is a great possibility. Computer science and and biology, right? So Anu Acharya, she I know her. She is in Hyderabad. She started this company, Genome Patri. So if you want, I think probably some of you will marry or you are already married. So anyway, so I don't know. So you can actually you can use this service, Genome Patri, right? And actually, it's there. So you can search and take the service from them. You know. So by the way, these three things, RNA computing, DNA computing, and bacterial computing are very, very important because here we can do it, applications. Now what is DNA computing? So normally in a computer, we have this bits, binary strings which are doing interactions with us, with each other, and doing computations. You know, these are the binary operations and so on. In DNA computing, we have DNA strands, ACGT strings, you know, and you do computation with ACGT strings, okay? So normally A and T are complement, adenosine, cytosine, thymine, go, and guanine. So A and T are complement, and C and G are complement. There is a hydrogen bond between them. So T problem. How many hydrogen bonds are there between C and G, and how many hydrogen bonds are there between A and T? It's a very very important question because hydrogen bonds determines the stability, right? So if there are more hydrogen bonds, you need to heat more to separate the strands, right? Okay, so this is very, very important concept. Anyway, this is all about DNA computing, basic things. Now, there are different application areas in DNA computing. DNA ties, we have done some work here. So it's a bunch of you know, ties which will interact with each other and do the computation for you. And these ties are nothing but made of DNA. So, you know, they call it double crossover DNA or triple crossover DNA molecule. And these DNA molecules interact with each other to do computation. Any computation you can do because it is Turing universal. Call from the seat mat, Turing universal, right? So you can do any kind of thing with this. You can make beautiful DNA nanostructures. I'm sure you might have seen COVID-19, COVID right? So that virus is beautiful, by the way, mathematically. If you look at the mathematics of it, it's really beautiful. All these viruses are very beautiful, you know, mathematically, and they're all having genome of RNA, so RNA genome, you know. I think you might be no, old, to kabhi hua hoga, right? Old hua hoga, to kyu bolte hai? Kaadha piyo ya garam chaya piyo, right? So you drink some hot thing. Why? Because these viruses normally die at the temperature of 32 degrees centigrade. So if you drink, the concentration of, uh, actually all these, uh, for example, common cold viruses can enter inside your body from this place here, you know, so there is a, each one has a receptor from where they can actually enter into the body. So if you drink hot things, uh, you know, the concentration will go down and, you know, uh, I mean, you, you can, I mean, your body can win on the virus, you know. So all these, uh, you know, structures, so probably now, think like now it's bioengineering. You want to kill the virus, right? So coronavirus you want to kill. How you do that? So basically you can design these kind of artificial viruses, which can maybe fight with them, right? And for that, what you require? Computer science. You require programs, and then you can design these DNA strands in a special way, and they can, you know, form that kind of a structure. So we call it as a nano structures. And then the, these nano structures, you can also use for, uh, uh, you know, cargo. You can put some uh, molecule inside and travel inside the body. All kind of things are possible, okay? So these things can be designed from computer science. A lot of work has been done. We have our own software, uh, 3DNA. Uh, using 3DNA, you can design uh, uh, nano structures using DNA. This was written by, again, two BTEC students here earlier, Shikhar Gupta and Koram Joshi. She, both of them are in Germany. I think they finished their PhD and now moved to Silicon Valley, anyway, recently. Anyway, so that is that part. DNA cryptography. So there is one standalone uh, uh, thing, but now we are going to mix it with DNA storage system. DNA circuits, whatever circuits you have seen, you can make those circuits out of DNA. So, you know, and 
dna strand displacement i say that dna strand displacement is a technology where bunch of dna strands are fighting with each other and doing the computation for you okay so they are interacting with each other or dancing i you can call it dancing dna and you can do any computation that you want okay it's a beautiful thing so all these things are beautiful applications of dna computing so we are in, actually focusing here and here right in this course actually i am not going to touch all other things but some of these things are available on our uh, previously uh, given course on natural computing okay so now we are focusing on storage the storage is everywhere right so this is i think you might have seen on the tv sometime there is a i don't remember the channel right storage war there is a serial right in us right it's a very difficult problem so people have created companies you know for example suppose you go to usa you study you are studying in some university and university says that in the summer university is closed hostel is closed take your stuff so where to store problem right so there are companies which will take all of your stuff store it in their own place and then they will return it to you when the semester starts right people have made business out of it right so storage is a really burning problem then you realize when you go to us right and so how to solve it of course so every every species you know every life needs storage right uh, and it is very very fundamental both for for the from the point of view of life and computation so it's a very basic computing uh, primitive and we can say that life is nothing but a storage plus information processing so kind of computing on the top of it so modern humans stores data right i think now look at the history of storage by the way this is a honey pot ants storing honey every species is having a storage problem you know so this is the history of uh, storage cave paintings used we stored data on the caves tally sticks papyrus then evolved into paper punch card hard disk some of these things you are familiar with right i don't know whether i have still i, I went to lucknow i have uh, you know i have in my house all these flop, floppies 8 inch 5.25 have you seen these floppies you know some of you might be having it then all this uh, you know magnetic tape williams tubes cd cd rom compact flash dvd memory stick uh, memory stick flash drive you know, it's very common blu ray high definition dvd and this is the uh, thing that we are currently using quite a lot which is cloud storage right whenever you are logging into gmail you store data in cloud right cloud means bunch of computers distributed across the network and your your file is decomposed into bunch of bunch of chunks packets and they are thrown across the network and then you access them whenever you access them you get the data from the cloud this is a kind of cloud data center one picture from ibm cloud data center in auckland new zealand i don't know why i have taken auckland and south korea but it's fine so here is a google file system a file storage system there is a app master file chunk servers and then they are divided chunks are distributed and you can see that they are redundant so when you normally i, I don't remember the current uh, value but earlier when in gmail was using 35 times replication of each of your packet so now you know it may be more i have no idea you know anyway so this is your their thing there are chunk servers and the master is also there are several copies of masters right because if this fails you don't know which chunk is where right so this is how the google file system works okay so we were talking about elephants what about elephants so elephant means big data right huge so how many elephants are we generating this is a nice estimate by former executive chairman of google eric he says that from the dawn of civilization until 2003 human can generate 5 exabytes of data 1 exabyte is equal to 1 billion gigabytes it's in the order of 10 to the power 18 now you produce 5 exabytes every 2 days in the pace is accelerating this is something in 2010 how many years 12 years ago right so it's it's 12 years ago uh, this estimate is there the question is how much data we have generated so right now every day we are getting couple of exabytes right what is the current size of internet 
So current size of internet is something around little more than 700 exabytes, you know. So that's all, 700 exabytes, right? And so where to store all this information? This is a challenge anyway. So let us see why, what is the challenge here. So in future, the data will be generated in the order of 10 to the power 30. I am sure you have not heard about this term geo byte uh, from Internet of Things because every device is connected, they are generating data, right? And so a lot of data will be produced. This is also a little bit old picture, but it shows you in 60 seconds how, what is happening in the Internet scenario, right? So the vocabulary is megabyte, gigabyte, 10 is for 9, terabyte, terabyte, you know, petabyte, exabyte, gigabyte, yottabyte, yondabyte, and gigabyte. So this is the thing. So I think this is also probably we will see that hopefully uh, we will be able to handle up to 10 is for 30, that order of data. Now, what is the big problem here? You know, so the, how big is this elephant? So there are two main things. Storage space is a huge problem. Okay, why? You see that uh, you know terabyte you can store in just hard disk or whatever. Now you have even pen drive also, right? Petabyte uh, is something like a storage pod. Exabyte will fit 2,000 cabinets and fill a four-story data center that takes up a city block. This is also a little bit old picture, but it gives you estimate. So zettabyte will fit uh, 1,000 data centers or 20% of Manhattan, New York. Yotabyte will fit the states of Delaware and Rhode Island with millions of data centers. See, electricity cost, finance, space, huge. Hum to kabhi sochte nahi, Facebook pe photo dalo, Twitter pe dalo, right? So, baaki headache to Google or Facebook walo ka hai, data kahan store kare, right? That is a big problem. Second is, so that's why you might have seen that Facebook has certain data centers in islands, you know, so that less electricity is consumed. Okay. And then we have cost. This is also a picture from 2008. US GDP was $14 trillion, European was $18 trillion, world GDP was $61 trillion in 2008, and Yota White storage cost was $100 trillion. Cost is too much, and space requirement is too much. So, where is the solution, right? This is a big problem, right? So, now we have to store all this data. What is the ultimate storage device? DNA. Because one gram of DNA can store 455 exabytes of data in the order of 10 is for 18. So two gram of internet is sufficient to store entire internet. So which is very, very ultimate density, right? <coughs> and so what is DNA actually? So I think you know that adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine, these are the base pairs, ACGT, right? And uh, you know, they form a polymer, a kind of long chain of ACGT strings are there. And uh, we, can, we are using this, normally, you know, if there are two strands of complementary nature, means A is complement to P and C is complement to G, you will get double helix, right? This kind of structure. This is a very basic thing about DNA. Now, when I want to store data in DNA, I need some uh, writing process and reading process, right? So, normally, how do we write? So, there are two machines which are very popular because of the human genome project and so on. Uh, one is uh, known as uh, sequencer. This is a sequencer, which is at the size of pen drive, which is possible now, okay? And then this, so you, this is for reading DNA. And this is for writing DNA, okay? So these boxes are there. So basically you write. So basically uh, you can ask the machine to generate a string of A, C, T, 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 or whatever, right? So this machine can do that and so that Physical DNA will be created, okay? That you can either, it, it is form of a solution or dry DNA, whatever you want, that is a possibility, okay? So uh, that is possible here in, this is for uh, synthesizer. So this machine is known as DNA synthesizer and this is sequencer, okay? So there is some comparison, hard disk, uh, read write speed, Flash memory, bacterial DNA, uh, you know, this is paper I have taken from nature. And you can see that weight of DNA need to store world's entire data. Whatever ever has been produced, I'm not talking about not only internet, anything ever produced on this planet can be stored in one kilogram of DNA. This is 
beautiful, right? One kg DNA you can carry and hold data, right? So there is some access time, and of course, durability. Obviously, DNA-based archival storage is still in, in hours, couple of hours it takes to read and write. People are working on it uh, at a, I think recently, uh, Catalog DNA has produced a DNA printer, which is uh, very fast. Uh, so now people are the machine, you know, producing machines which can do all these things automatically. Okay. Now, what is the you know the whole system? How it works actually? So there is the encoding. So you have your file, uh, you know, whether it is doc file, PDF file, whatever file, Facebook memories. So that means. To me, these are nothing but byte strings, right? So once you have byte strings, you convert those byte strings into oh, DNA using some novel mechanism. I will I'll give you an example. Once you convert into DNA of ACGT, then you give to this synthesizer machine, which will produce the physical DNA, then you store into the test tube. Now these test tubes you can store in your garden also. No electricity required. Or if you want, you convert any file into DNA, right? And uh, convert it into maybe a solution or something, spray on your shirt and walk or with all your data. So, whenever you want to retrieve, just take your shirt, small wash with water, you know, collect the DNA and then retrieve the DNA, right? That is a possibility. Get the data, right? You don't have to carry pen drive, right? So that is something interesting. Now retrieval is there, obviously. And then sequencing means reading the DNA. So there are machines. All these machines, sequencer and uh, synthesizers are available in Ahmedabad, by the way. So if you want to really try your Facebook memories, you can actually use our software to convert into DNA, send, uh, go to the Ahmedabad, take a bus or whatever, auto or taxi, and Uber, and then you Get the work done, you know, you convert everything into the physical DNA and come with a test tube, right? Store in your hostel, right? And then decoding. So obviously this encoding and decoding requires a codec, it's a software, which will do all the encoding decoding in an efficient way, right? Now what happens when we convert this whole process, errors are bound to happen. And so we require error correction. Reading process, writing process will have error. So how many errors? So the codec can tolerate certain uh, number of errors, and that is what is uh, very, very important here, you know. So reading error, writing error, and storage errors, we want to overcome these difficulties, which is a part of engineering challenge, right? How to overcome these things. So actually in this course, uh, each block, encoding, synthesis, storage, retrieval, sequencing, decoding, we'll go into details. For example, we'll see, we'll see the different, uh, uh, you know, companies are doing synthesis, synthesize, right? So recently there is a most popular technique is enzyme based DNA synthesis. So I will show you how that works, you know, that machine works, you know. I am not only focusing on theory or software, but I will also show you how to build that kind of machine, you know, really what kind of things goes there, you know. Similarly, you know, sequencing. So sequencing, uh, so you might have seen, uh, I have shown you on the WhatsApp group that pen drive with DNA inside, right? Pen drive with DNA. So that is a vision. Can you produce this kind of pen drive of DNA storage system? You plug into your system and data is, this is still a vision, not done yet, but yes. So I hope some of you from this class will do this job finally. Anyway, so timeline, there are some earlier attempt in 1999, they have taken a small image or a small text and they kind of written into DNA and retrieved it back with a lot of errors, corrected manually, all kind of things. All this history is there until we have year 2012. In fact, before 2012 also there was some work done earlier, but mainly George Church at Harvard University, same as guy, you know. So he's having, I think, a couple of companies also. Also, you know, a lot of great work. So he actually, uh, wrote one paper where he has shown how to store data. So he took five files, four or five files, stored it. In fact, uh, you know, he took a book, converted it into 
ACGT is stored in the DNA and then retrieved successfully, you know. But he has not used any error correction mechanism. Most of the errors were corrected manually, you know. So this was the, his approach. And but you see, this was first time somebody is doing uh, so much thing, right? Uh, is storing a lot of data. So obviously, it come came into I think science. Yeah, this paper was published in Science. Science, you know, is a respected journal. Then in 2013. I think in European Bio, uh, Bio Institute, this Nick Goldman at Cambridge University and this is Emily. Emily is, she has founded Twist Biosciences in Silicon Valley, which is now leader in DNA storage technology right now. Uh, so now you see, uh, I think her background is in uh, biology or biotechnology, but now I can, I am uh, amazed. These people are doing all kind of things, right? Right from hardware, you know, because this is a mixture of electronics, hardware, plus chemistry, plus software, then only technology will come, right? Everything is required. So this is really interesting. So I think at the same time, uh, in 2013, I mean, in fact, 2012, when this paper was published, uh, uh, you know, uh, by Goldman, uh, in the same year, uh, there was one BTEC student, Shalin Shah, who was working with me, he, I think in second year. So he asked me, he wants to do some work. I said, this is the recent paper in Nature. Just implement it, right? So he implemented it. Then he said, that, "Sir, there is a problem. We can only encode five five hundred MB file. Beyond that, there is a problem in the algorithm." Then we looked at it. What is the problem? The chunk architecture was fixed in the in the system, right? It was 117 uh, bits. So we said that we should it should be dynamic, right? So that we can encode more. And so we modified the algorithm, and then we released the software. It was uh, published in that conference uh, later on in 2013. Okay, so that was the beginning when we modified. Then we asked, can we do better? You know, so with better error correction, and we have done some more work with there. And after that, a lot more. I have not listed papers beyond 2016 because because there are too many to list here, right? So that's why this course. So you will see a lot of other things in the course. These are some early papers. So these blue ones are uh, the ones which were written by us. Uh, and you can see that Church paper is the first one. Goldman paper is the second one. And ours was the third paper, actually, uh, in this area, you know. Uh, so now uh, there are many more after that. And as you know that there are companies which are working actively on in this. So this is the archival DNA storage model. Uh, uh, they use what is called as run sense encoding. I'm not going into details of anything here, but I just show, show that this is how the whole block thing is. Data source, encoding, DNA coding, synthesis and sequencing. Synthesis means writing the DNA, sequencing means reading the DNA, and decoding, right? So chunk architecture was something like this. Length of chunk was 115. They stored a 5.27 MB book. No error correction. This paper appeared in Science by George Church. And Goldman actually, what they did, they used fourfold redundancy added to the system. Then they use Huffman coding. Huffman encoding you might have seen, right? From the sheet map. Anyway, so here, by the way, it's a ternary Huffman encoding. Okay. So I think they, you might have read binary one. Anyway, so this is the thing. We modified this paper. So, in fact, we modified this paper. This is Shalin Shah, and Dikshita is uh, my PhD student. She is in London now, working in a company. So, this was the work uh, done. Shalin finished his PhD from Duke University, by the way, after BTEC from here. And he got a very good scholarship, $8,600 scholarship per year for doing PhD. By the way, so what is this uh, model? Let me show you. I can skip this. But I'll just mention a few things here. We propose the structure based on uh, DNA Gole code. So I'll tell you what is DNA Gole code. Uh, we achieved 115 exabytes per gram of DNA using our method. By the way, uh, Nick Goldman and his team, they have worked, uh, they have stored data in the order of 2.2 petabytes per gram of DNA. And ours was in exabytes. So this is really in that order. And so we want that one gram of DNA. So we want techniques, algorithms, which can store data up to 455 exabytes per gram of DNA, right? That is what is the ultimate thing. Uh, so, and we have used variable variable length architecture. So let me give you a very brief example. So 
this is the goldman architecture binary file base 3 encoding so everything is converted into 0 1 2 then converted into dna and then we made dna fragments with four fold redundancy okay and we and they have used this map this is beautiful map i'll explain it how it works we have also used the same map so we replaced everything with ternary gole code and we made chunk of length 99 let me show you the example DIICT, s key values are this these are the ternary code words we have that table here you know if you see uh, we have the table here this table i have used we have we carefully drafted this table okay so each s key value has a vector ternary vector okay vector over 0 1 2 okay so from this we convert so everything is converted into this ternary vector then separators you know of any any other uh, header you can have say for example comma separator text file you know file size is also that number converted into ternary value then we pad it with zeros so that everything is multiple of 99 we pad with zeros right that's what we do so we arrived at this kind of thing okay now this is our final string ternary string now we convert this string into a string of acgt such that there is no repetition of a c g or t in the final string means a a c c g g yeah, a a a c c c g g g t t t should not appear for that we have used a beautiful map call it non homopolymer map so let me show you how it works so here the first bit is zero so what we do First bit is zero. I can assume previously previous nucleotide anything. So I'm assuming suppose it is A. You can use you can start from here 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 no problem. Okay. So I'm assuming A is there. So the first bit is C. Here it is C. You can see that right. Okay. Now we go to second one is two. When go to two, the previous nucleotide is here. Two and C will give you A. So A will come here right so like that we keep on changing this map has this property that it maintains that no two bits are repeated in acgt so aa cc gg is not there anyway repetition is not possible beautiful map right we have to generalize this also uh, you can read we'll talk about it later on so this is the key thing so once we have this map this um, uh, is string ACGT. Then we make chunks of length 99. Remember, initially we made uh, everything should be a multiple of 99. So we now make uh, chunks of length 99, two chunks. Then we, <coughs> we add index. Indexing is done. This is chunk index one, chunk index two, corresponding ACGT. So this is indexed one, the red one. Okay. And now so this is how you basically do so basically this is how we now we can synthesize over so this these strings you can actually send it to any uh, biotech company in Ahmedabad or whatever and they will give you powder DNA right in the form of it so we have modified this version 2.0 was released uh, Vijay Dhamelia who he was also a BTEC student and he got a very good scholarship i think around 45000 us dollar per per year for phd after btech after doing all this work but he became sadhu so he is now in ahmedabad there is a what is that uh, trust you know i mean they actually visit a lot of universities and encourage people to become sadhu, right? So that is also a career path, you know. I mean, good thing actually. It's a it's a very courageous decision, right? To to do that actually, right? Madhav Kakar, I think Madhav Madhav went to LinkedIn, but I think now he changed to some other company. I'm not sure. Just telling about my students also what what they do after this. So basically, uh, you can see the improvement. 
the Goldman result, uh, which appeared in Nature, these five files, and there's a huge improvement. Uh, so the number of chunks are less, and number of glucotides are less, less, right, with our approach. We also done things with bacteria, so especially we use plasmid DNA, which is something here. And uh, so now you store all your data in your stomach. So you can use this software, you know, Backsoft. So actually, it will allow you which plasma to choose and so on and so forth. It will help you. Some of you who want to work further on this, it is possible. The software is already there in uh, up to some stage. You can modify and update, update. You know, upgraded version can be released further. So this is there. So as I mentioned, we have shown the experiment to. Prime Ministers, uh, you can see that if you point your mobile, you can see the corresponding text, you know, Indian Talents Times Israeli Technology. I have included these slides because you have done this demonstration to the, to the uh, Prime Ministers of Israel and India. So you see this is the corresponding DNA text, right? Or for the image, you can see audio, video, everything is there, right? And of course, it was covered in Times of India twice, actually, you know. So, now some recent news headlines. They restored a movie in bacteria and retrieved it successfully. This is the after retrieval reconstruction, you know. And this is before. This is done. Beautiful thing. See, everything is, you know, to make you hero. New York Times, they covered it, right? If you do something, if you have some ideas about doing new experiments or new software or new algorithms, you can do that actually, right? And it is, you know, it will be covered, of course. I, you know, in fact, a lot of people ask for an uh, interview, you know. So this is the Microsoft prototype automated machine they have uh, built in 2019, I guess, yes, 2019. <laughs> $10,000 prototype. Everything is automated. See, basically, the way you can do is uh, writing DNA, all these things, prepared to do all this business, right? Here, you, everything is automated, this machine. We want pen drive kind of thing. That is wizard, right? You insert pen drive and everything is done automatically, right? But this is the first prototype made uh, by Microsoft. And writing hello, uh, it took them about 21 hours to read and write hello in one milligram of DNA. Just experiment. But after that, they have progress further now companies i have not included a couple of things which of course i cannot include because it's all secret technology but anyway so they include a uh, stored netflix show in that twist dna rewritable dna storage i talked about archival a lot of work has been done on rewritable dna storage we'll talk about this more in the course you know read and write for that, you require beautiful algorithms, right, to do all these things. There are so many startups, so as I mentioned, catalog, DNA script, uh, Codex DNA, I forgot to include here anyway. Twist Biosciences, uh, Felix works in UK. And so these are the, some nine or 10 companies which are working in this area right now. Uh, but of course, these are the startups. Of course, companies are now almost all storage companies. Seagate, you might have heard. <coughs> Seagate is the hardest company, right? Seagate, Quantum, all these companies, Western Digital, they're all now part of this consortium and we are making standards for this uh, technology. So this is, this alliance was formed by Illumina, Microsoft, these are the founders, Western Digital. And now there are, I think, more than 25, something around 25 to 28 members are there. We are also part of it, actually, you know, for this alliance, you know. So now recently, George Church, you see, he will not sit just like that. Remember, we were talking about storing data in exabyte, right? He has demonstrated that you can store 432 by exabytes per gram of DNA by doing that experiment. This paper came recently, Nature Computational Science. And I have written a small note about this paper uh, in the same journal. So it's very beautiful. Here, he has used a codec which is based on Indian or Chinese philosophy, yin yang. Right? So I don't know whether you know yin yang philosophy, Buddhism philosophy or something like that. Using that idea, 
live within the codec and achieve 432 exabytes per gram of DNA. So now, what are the challenges? It still is a little bit costly. Developing new error correction techniques or new algorithms, rewritable DNA storage, exploring, exploring other living organisms. You know, bacteria we have tried. You can, I think somebody has done experiment with plants also. You can store data on your plants and you retrieve, retrieve it whenever you want. So, this is a beautiful picture, picture showing these many things in CD. Now, ent uh, entire world information in this test tube. So, uh, we looked at uh, in synthetic DNA storage, plants, proteins, by humans. We can store data in ourselves, you know. So, this is the tentative course content, which I thought of. We modify, play here and there, and do things. So, basically, we'll talk about the sequencing technology, architecture, and so on. Cryptography and security towards the end, you know. Now I'll show you, I don't know whether you can see a video here or not. We are producing a lot more data than we're capable of storing today. We think that to put a dent on the problem, uh, we need a radical new solution. And so we're looking at DNA as one such solution. One of the reasons that we're, we're using DNA is its density is, is orders of magnitude higher than anything that exists today. It's reliability and resiliency, and then it is, has relevancy. We think that as long as there are humans alive, we'll care about reading our own DNA. And that means that we'll have a storage format that will be with us that will always be relevant. We have been working on using DNA for data storage for several years now, and but the process so far has been incredibly manual. There literally people moving around with pipettes in their hands. So the only way we're gonna make DNA data storage scale up to be usable and be, you know, go mainstream is by automating it. And what we've done with this, the project that you're gonna learn more about now is showing that it's possible to automate the entire process from bits to molecules and back to, to bits. The writing process takes your data file uh, and encodes those ones and zeros into a Literally, people moving around with pipes. And what we've done with this, the project that you're going to learn more about now, is showing that it's possible to automate the entire process from bits to molecules and back to, to bits. The writing process takes your data file uh, and encodes those ones and zeros into A, C's, T's, and G's. Uh, those A, C's, T's, and G's are actually what gets sent to the device itself. Every base that flows into the column incorporates itself onto a strand of DNA. So once all the DNA bases have been incorporated into the strands on the column, the strands need to be removed from the column. So we pump a chemical mixture into the column, which frees them from their solid support and pushes them into a liquid storage bottle. So once we decide to read the data off the DNA, the read master mix is applied to the DNA storage pool. That master mix prepares the DNA to be read. Now that the DNA is readable, it gets pumped into the read device where it gets translated into A, C's, T's, and G's sequences the computer can understand. Those sequences then get decoded back into ones and zeros. Moving into the future, what we'd like to do is move fluids around in a more intelligent way, uh, which is accomplished by the Purple Drop project. Uh, so we're basically making the uh, like biological primitives. Okay, so see you in the next class then. Thank you.